In this video, let us discuss GPAT 2017 questions from the pharmaceutical analysis. First question, which of the following compounds absorb at the longest wavelength? A. 135-hexatriene B. 135-7-octatetraene and C. 17-diphenyl-135-heptatriene and D. 16-diphenyl-135-heptatriene For more absorption at the longest wavelength, the compound should have more number of pi bonds and more conjugated pi bonds. So if you find these two criteria, you can easily observe that option D is the compound having the longest wavelength which is having the more absorption. So let us see first option that is 135 hexatriene and second one is the 1357 octatetraene and third one is the 17 diphenyl 135 heptatriene and option D is the 16 diphenyl 135 heptatriene. So if you see the first option it is having 3 pi bonds. And second option, it is having 4 pi bonds. And third option, it is having 6 pi bonds. Here, pi bonds are not completely conjugated. You can see the non-conjugated carbon there. So, what are the pi bonds here, which are not participating in the conjugation, are not counted. So, totally effective pi bonds are only 6, which are conjugated. And in the last structure, you can see totally 9 conjugated double bonds are there. So, as the number of pi bonds increases with conjugation, the absorption increases and lambda max also increases. So, 16-diphenyl-135-heptatriene, it shows the more absorption among these four compounds. It's the right answer for this question. If the excitation energy of the resonance level is 2.10 electron volts, where H is equal to 1233, 3, then wavelength of the resonance line of the sodium atom is options are a 577.2 nanometer b 587.2 nanometer and c 567.2 nanometer and d 597.2 nanometer so here we have to simply use the equation e is equal to h c by lambda already the h c value is given and e value is given so we have to identify what is the lambda value, the wavelength of the resonance line. So 2.10 is equal to 1233 by lambda. Otherwise the lambda is equal to 1233 by 2.1 where it is equal to 587.2 nanometer. So here B is the right answer. Chemical interference are common than spectral interference due to a formation of the compounds of low volatility b ionization in flames and c increase in the rate of atomization and d no shift in the ionization equilibrium so here formation of compounds of low volatility is the main reason for the chemical interference so we have two important interference like spectral interference and chemical interference. Spectral interference is also called as cationic interference. For example, if you are going to estimate sodium, sodium can be detected by the detector at 589 nanometer. If the same solution is having the calcium, calcium can also either absorb or emit at the 623 nanometers which will interfere with the study of the sodium. So such type of interference because of another cation with a nearer lambda max leading to the spectral interference or cationic interference. So spectral or cationic interference can be eliminated by using the suitable interferometric filters which will eliminate the interferent radiation. Now chemical interference. Chemical interference is because of the anions. Suppose we are studying the calcium, the solution is having the sulphate ions. Now this calcium can form calcium sulphate by interaction with these sulphate ions. Calcium sulphate is less volatile. It cannot be converted to a gaseous ionic state. So this decreases the absorption or emission. This is what you call the 
chemical interference because this interference is caused by an anion so sometimes it's also called as anionic interference so the right answer for the previous question is the chemical interference is mainly due to the formation of the less volatile compounds like calcium sulfate now let us go to the next question which among the following statements on electroanalytical methods are correct a conductometry measures the conductance between the two electrodes with ac powered wheatstone bridge b polarography involves the plotting of conductance versus voltage c potentiometry involves the application of ilkovic equation and d coulometry involves the application of nernst law relating equivalence between the quantity of the electricity passed and the amount of the compound generated at electrodes so here the right answer is the conductometry measures the conductance between the two electrodes with ac powered wheatstone bridge so now let us see these four techniques like conductometry polarography potentiometry and coulometry polarography is a plot of current versus voltage and it mainly uses the one of the equation ilkovic equation and potentiometry involves the measurement of the voltage at i is equal to 0 and it uses the nernst equation and coulometry works based on the faraday law of electrolysis how many number of coulombs are required to completely electrolyze a particular electroactive species is going to be studied in the coulometry but the conductometry involves the two platinum electrodes connected with the ac current of 1000 hertz where the conductance of the particular solution is going to be measured so if you see the question the polarography involves the plotting of conductance versus voltage that is false it involves the plotting of the current versus voltage and potentiometry does not involve the ilkovic equation it involves the nernst equation and coulometry does not involve the nernst law it it is based on the faraday's law of electrolysis so here the right answer is the conductometry measures the conductance between the two electrodes with ac powered wheatstone bridge that is the right answer for this question which among the following electronic system are not involved in the origin of the uv spectrum options are s and p shell electrons sigma and pi electrons charge transfer electrons and d and f shell electrons sigma and pi electrons can produce different types of transition like sigma to sigma transition and pi to pi transition even sigma to sigma transition fall in the vacuum uv pi to pi transition can fall in the normal uv region which is responsible for the electronic transition in the uv spectrum similarly charge transfer electrons can also produce the absorption in the uv spectrum for example the change in the color of the phenophthalene by change the ph is an example of charge transfer complex so these charge transfer complex again undergo transitions like pi to pi or n to pi but which depends on a condition like the change in the pH. D and F shell electrons, particularly these electrons are present in the transition metals which shows the variable oxidation states. So these electrons can also undergo transitions for example D to D transition results in the absorption of the color. K-4 shows the color because of D to D transition. Finally S and P shell electrons are the inner electrons which are not participated in any electronic transition so they are not involved in the origin of the uv spectrum so a is the answer for this question which among the following statements related to ceric sulfate as oxidizing agent as titrant are correct a ce4 during reaction exists as anionic complex in media of sulfuric acid b Ionic equation is Ce3 plus goes to Ce2 plus plus E minus. Formal potential of Ce3 by Ce2 couple is 1. Ce4 does not permit the use of HCl as reducing media. 
So here the right answer is A. Cerium-4 during the reaction exists as anionic complex in media of sulfuric acid. Cerium-4 sulfate as oxidizing acid. It is having so many advantages. First one, the solution is stable for longer periods. Second, it is less colored, so easy to read the end point. And third, it is suitable even in high concentration of the HCl. So HCl will not cause any instability in the cerium-4 sulfate. And it involves a simple reduction reaction. The reaction is cerium-4 is tends to cerium-3 plus plus E minus. And cerium sulfate during the titration exists as uh, anionic complexes like CSO444 minus or CSO432 minus. These anionic complexes are present in presence of sulfuric acid. So cerium sulfate existing as an anionic complex is the right answer for the given question.